these two guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. It's time for some innovation here. The only show in America that actually keeps track of our predictions with statistics. Minnesota sports with Mackie and Joe. We also do this in football form over on Purple Daily where no, you can find no, no, our guy stop. Chansey and don't, Fargo uh, running circles around us and Judd going, yeah, I don't, think, for no. 15 incompletions. Nope. 15 incompletions? I had a couple right. I'm a sports <laughs> expert, damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Why can't you people see that? You get paid to do this, Judd? Must be nice to get yeah. paid to be wrong purple, all the time. <laughs> purple Daily. Go see the destruction of Judd Zolgad. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it might not get better here. We'll have to see. We've, we've okay. got a beefy accountability session because there's a lot of draft stuff coming off the board. But, uh, yeah, if you're new to how this works, three predictions from everybody each week. They must be quantifiable. We keep track of batting averages and home runs. And listeners, if you want to participate like John is about to, you can send us a message through the Score North app. We'll get you signed up. Send it to Declan. We'll get you signed up sometime this summer. A shout out to our friends, our new friends at Power Lodge and Miller Marine, gentlemen. So now through Saturday, May 6th, is your last chance to cruise the lake in style and save cash. It's the Power Lodge and Miller Marine's power sale. Get that boat or pontoon. That's just right for you for your next remember when family moment. We're gonna we're gonna send Judd out on a pontoon, put some sunscreen on his cheeks and his nose. Just let me sail away. And just let you I think you need for, like a, a week on a pontoon just yes. to just to get rid of all this wild angst you've been well, feeling. And you like this maybe send Dean Evison on a pontoon. And write that down, angst. Just go sail, sail and relax and take a deep breath. You know what I need? I need exactly what we dish out on a daily basis on our shows. I need sports therapy. And where better to get that sports therapy than a nice, relaxing pontoon ride? Yes. Head to PowerLodge.com or MillerMarine.com and get used to saving big. It all starts at the Lodge. Power Lodge. All right. Let's get to the accountabilities here, boys. Pretty good week for Judd. Pretty good week for Judd. Oh, thanks for the condescending, Declan. Not bad, Judd. Here's a pat on the head because you did so poorly in Purple Daily. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, mister. You said the Wild would force... We'll start with the bad here. The Wild would force a Game 7 yeah, yeah. against the Stars. They did not. You said the Wild would win in seven games against the Stars. I'm willing to accept that one. The first one pisses me off to no end. But you made up for it. You said the Vikings would draft a quarterback, and Kirk Cousins will post nothing about that quarterback on social media. Unless I missed something. Now he did. No, actually, he wouldn't have been on the second day of that, or the third day, I guess, of no. the Bleacher. Can you imagine no, him didn't. like on the third day of the Bleacher Report? Uh, All right, Kirk, what do you think of uh, Jaquel and Roy? No idea. You said Byron Buxton won't play in a game in center field until at least May. We're into May, and he has not I, yet played a game in center field. I perhaps should should have extended that to the All Star break. That would have been a home run for sure. And you said the Flames would part ways with old Daryl. Old crusty Daryl. Took him a while. Just staring off into the distance with a scowl, as always. Whoa. All right, Macadac. Eh, a little bit of a mixed week here. We'll start with the bad. So the Vikings would draft a quarterback, and Cousins would post about the quarterback on social. So he did post about Jordan Addison on the first night of the draft. Yep. But we'll never know if they would have drafted Levis. That's what I was going to say. It needed to be a first-round guy to really trigger it. Yep. All right, I said uh, Brother Liam would be incorrect on at least three hockey predictions before the end of the season. And I don't think he made enough hockey predictions in his oh. write-that-down appearances. Oh. We just, Interesting. We should have gotten him on another time, I guess. Uh, see, he's going to tell Dex, you see, yep. this is why I have to appear more. You know that's coming now. Yeah, it's, that's inevitable now. Let's get Brother Liam back on. <laughs> yeah, to, I can do that. On this. No, I can do that. I can do that. That's fine. No, yeah, my, no, you're annoyed. My, no, it's fine. My, you're my annoyed. fiance actually wants... To, she wants herself and my brother Liam to come on and make wedding predictions. You know that we're still like a oh. year plus out. Oh, but she wow. wants predictions oh. on the wedding day because she knows how I get at a wedding and the mistakes I can make. I oh, think you're going to be so uptight, Declan. Yeah, I think we wants, need to make this happen. Those. This yes. no, this has to happen ASAP too. I love this idea. There might be a couple appearances so we can get like six six things on the board. I can see that. Too. Off season predict. <laughs> oh man, this is perfect. 
Old Mackadak also said the Wild would win game six, and in game seven, Kaprizov would score a go-ahead power play goal in the third period. Perhaps an alternate universe. Hallucinations. Yep. Byron Bucks will play center field for at least one out in April. Judd's making a living just counter-predicting me, apparently, here. And then the Wild would reach the conference finals, which was ridiculous. But I did say by the end of May, Judd would call for the dismissal of Dean Evison, and he has he has done that. Absolute bunt <laughs> once they lost in six games. Safety uh, squeeze. That's what that was. Back in February, I said the Gus bus would start more games than Marc-Andre Fleury regular season and postseason from that point forward, February 22nd forward. And he did. He started, I believe it was four more games than Marc-Andre Fleury. Got it. All right, man. Listeners, bloodbath oh. here. Oh, my God. I'm not going to read all these. If you want to see all of them, you can yeah. look at the visual here on the YouTube channel. We'll go through a few of them here. But uh, Guzzo said the Vikings would draft three of these four players. Three of these four players? Quentin Johnston. Uh, is it Thule, Tupu, uh, sure. <laughs> Tupaludo? Not going to work Williams here anymore. And, and Tanner, Tanner McKee. Not going not gonna, not gonna to work here anymore. Uh, let's see here. Brandon says the Vikings stay at 23. They'll take Kalijah Kansi. He also had another trade scenario with the Falcons that did not happen. Jamie said the Bears would trade fields for multiple picks. Just all kinds of wrong predictions coming off the board. But three correct predictions for the listeners. Jeremy said the Vikings will draft one of the non-four top quarterbacks. So like Hendon Hooker on back. And they did. So he's right. Zach said Gustafson would start more games than Marc-Andre Fleury over the course of the Wilds' playoff run. He did. And Zach, I missed this one a couple weeks ago. Zach said uh, Joe Ryan would K at least seven Astros in his second start of the season. He got 10 in that game. So with that, we uh, bring it to Declan here. Oh, boy. You said Fleury would start games six and seven. Oof. We'd see a GWG by Ryan Reeves. And Ryan Reeves would register at least one playoff goal. Really high on Ryan Reeves there. Yeah, I don't know what, what was going on there. I don't really remember. He didn't do a whole lot. D- didn't do a whole lot in the playoffs. And then uh, you said Mark Andre Fleury would pass Patrick Waugh for second most wins all time. He, I think, came up still seven wins shy yeah, of. He's almost there. Patrick Waugh. So with that, no page two, huh? No page two for Dex. Just four incorrect. Sorry, there's no page two this time to surprise us with all that green, Declan. You're look at him! Look at you! Look at John! Just, yeah, just lashing out yeah, at that. I'm, right I'm sorry. I'm still upset about. Okay, yeah. I'm, 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 wow. full disclosure. I'm still very upset about what happened earlier today. I took. I lashed out. I'd like to apologize. I, I do feel better. Amazing. So, yeah. Judd, you are batting 400 with five home runs, leading both categories. Okay. Declan at 294 with a couple of bombs. Listeners at 260 with a couple of taters. And old Macadac is up from 120 two weeks ago to 184 now with three home runs. Don't sleep on old Macadac. He just increased his batting average 50% in two weeks. And still getting smoked. Still at 184. Declan at 379 all time. Judd with 276 hits all time. Listeners just one hit away from their 200th career hit. And write that down. Stats going back to 2018. And the listeners lead all time with 44 career home runs. So, all right. Woo. Let's get guest listener predictor John in the house. Hey, guys. To take some swings. Me again. John hitting for the cycle here, he told us off microphone. This is his appearance now on the Mackie and Judd write that down. He's been on Purple Daily write that down and Ventline here. We need like Saturday Night Live has the five hosting club. John has maybe created a new club here. The five no, I, benchmark club on Score North or something. I don't know what's. I'm called. gonna say full disclosure. I'm sure there's a bunch of people that qualify for this that did this before me. I'm just the one arrogant enough to say that I should be special. I think we <laughs> should. Let's, problem let's with put that. the bat, like, like hit it. us up, email us, or hit us up on Twitter if you've been on Ventline, Purple Daily, write that down, and Mackie and Judd write that down in your tenure as a listener. Send us a note. We want to. I'd like to put together a list and just sort of see who is in the exclusive club. Can we put together some, can we get him a gold jacket or something? Maybe Ross can work on something. Gold jacket, green jacket. Okay. <laughs> That's right. 
So, all right, well, uh, tell our audience here, when did you first become a Minnesota sports fan? What, uh, when did you first start suffering? Um, it would be when I was uh, young, uh, born in 88, so not entirely cognizant for 91 World Series, but um, my parents did buy for me the, uh, there was a children's book that Kirby Puckett wrote that was supposed to be, uh, oh, yeah. well, not, not supposed to be, it was an inspirational kind of book, like being the best you can be kind of thing. And so from there, I, I absolutely loved uh, the twins. Vikings came later. Uh, Vikings kind of became more true, true love when uh, the ineptitude of twins mid to late nineties happened. And it's just kind of been on from there. Adopted yeah. hockey later on going to college. Like, so it all kind of fell in and then basketball is whenever Timberwolves are actually good. So, yeah, I'm curious, Judd, if, 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 if a current wild player wrote and put out an inspirational oh, book for children, which player would it be and what would the message for children be? Oh, it'd be Spurgy. It'd be little Spurgy. Overcome, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm a great player despite it, the fact that I'm not big. Oh, it would be Jared Spurgeon for sure because he looks like a kid himself, right? But I mean, here's the thing the final chapter would, would end at game 82 every year. <laughs> because once you reach the playoff chapters, that's called a horror story. So oh, no playoff bl chapters. Blank pages. Yeah, or, actually, he uh, doesn't finish chapter one. The book's just over. It just it just prematurely ends. It just it just has a whole page that says. Yep. Sometimes when you're the most optimistic, the people in charge might yell at you. Yeah. And the book is entitled <laughs> "Hard Work and Having Fun," right? <laughs> yep. yep. Page six. That's it. <laughs> For, but what about forward, page seven? Never. Forward by Bill Guerin. Yes. <laughs> you, yeah. you MFing guys. That'd be great. The forward just says F that. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right, John. So we're going to go around the room three times here. You'll make the first prediction. So why don't you start us off? The predictions must be quantifiable. Otherwise, that's pretty much the only rule. Exactly. Uh, okay. So I'm going to kind of jump on this, uh, writing the hype of the NFL draft and also uh, I kind of share the same, a little bit saltiness as Judd with how things kind of ended with Adam Thielen. So I am going to say this, write this down. Jordan Addison will su surpass Thielen last year and this season in terms of yardage and touchdowns. So he will have more touchdowns than Adam Thielen last year. And this year, and also yardage. I, 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 Is that uh, combined? Like added up, you're saying? Or no. he'll just surpass? Okay. No, he'll surpass both seasons. So whatever Thielen does this year versus Addison this year versus whatever. Uh, I actually have it here. Thielen was 716 and six tuds. So, so, so if, if Thielen comes short of that, then that's the mark. If Thielen goes above that, then, there, then that's the new mark. Yeah. And Addison has to pass those numbers. Right. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. I like it. A lot of good uh, feeling Addison predictions across the, the two shows here. Today, well deserved. Judd. Well mm -hmm. deserved. I figured. Twins just uh, put out a press release that Louis Varlam's been recalled and Tyler Malley has gone on the IL, which is my first prediction. Tyler Malley won't pitch again for the Twins until at least August. So, you know, at first they're like, oh, we don't even know if he's going to miss his next start. And then they're like, yeah, he's got to, nah, he's going to miss his next start. And this is just, I mean, come on. How Have they said he's times? not going to throw for four weeks four now? Weeks. Isn't that what they said? Yeah, but Shut he's not going to pitch weeks. again until. And, and I think he'll try and come back at some point because his contract expires after the season. So if he can pitch, he sort of needs to again. But it's going to be at least Declan August. So you're saying it's not that big of a deal because he is under team control through September, right? So they, you know, so. Well, Chris Paddock, you just wait. Like his team control, it just goes on and you on don't understand. and understand. Team control is great. If a guy never understand. plays, but he's still yeah. under team control, is yeah. it still good for the, for the organization? You don't get it. He has no right arm, but that's not the point. Team he's control under, is. Under team control. Team control, should, we should put some shirts out. That should be our new band, team or, control. Team control. I like it. I do like it. All right, Dex. All right, I'm going to make a Twins prediction, and I know I'm probably just going to get killed from this from the listeners, but he's been playing in almost every game, so I'm going to write it down. Byron Buxton will avoid the injured list between now and the All-Star break. Okay. Between I thought now you were going and the full season break. There. Go yeah. full season. Come so on. Take a no, swing. I for a second. Nope. 
Take a swing, guy. Yeah. Come on. No, yeah. We're going to have a nice dribbler up the middle. You know what? Byron Buxton will avoid the injured list between now and the All-Star break. Right if down. Judd makes the same prediction, he gets ripped. I'm going to tell you that right now. I agree. Yes. If Judd makes that prediction, you guys are ripping me. Yep, Throwing it back in my face. You know, it's a two-month. I will say it's still it's Byron Buxton, and you're saying he's going to be healthy for the first three months of the season, although one's already Which, in the bank. Like, never happens. So you're saying two, he'll be healthy for two straight well, months, the yep. yeah. which is not a guarantee for him, but yes. Write this down. All right, write this down. I'll make a, let's see here. I can make a Buxton prediction. Yeah, I'll make a Buxton prediction too. All right, write this down. Buxton will cross, so he didn't play 100 games last year. That was the goal. Buxton will cross the 100 games played mark before September. Mm. So he will hit 100 games mm. played with a full month to go. So he, that might give him leeway to get to 120 or 130, depending. But he's going to hit 100 games okay. played or more before the month of September. Write it down. Off the record, will he have played? Will that include games in center field or no? Uh, off the record, I don't think he will play in center field between now and September. Okay. Maybe I'll go on the record with that at some point here. I think I, if Michael Taylor stays healthy, right? if Taylor goes down, I think they have a decision to make. Because then it's like, all right, are you going to put... Gordon out there, Kepler out there, Nick Gordon. Kepler, I don't want Kepler in center anymore. He's he he's is like fine and right. That's where he belongs. He's good out there. I don't want him in center field. Mm -hmm. All right, back to John here. Your second prediction. Okay, so if it is not obvious by the stuff behind me, I am a professional wrestling fan. Dude, so if, it, if he snipes my prediction right now, I'm gonna reach through the screen awesome. and on, RKO his Do ass. It. Oh, my God. I did have two, so I'm debating on yes. which one now. Shoot. Okay, this is going to be a multi-item parlay in case. Yes. Okay, here we go. Item one. Tonight on uh, AEW, you have Jungle Boy and Darby Allen versus Sammy G and MJF. If they win, it is a fatal four-way at double or nothing. Jungle Boy and Darby will win to make it a four-way. The second item, MJF will win that fatal four-way at double or nothing. The third item, MJF will eventually go on to be the longest reigning AEW world champion in company history. He's right now at 165 days and counting. He needs to beat Kenny Omega's reign at 345. Okay. So that's so all, in one, all in one all in one AEW parlay right there. Wow. All of it yes. in one bin. Okay. Yes. I think, you know, ordinarily we don't give home runs for wrestling predictions, but I think if you're stacking enough things like that, Dex, I, I think this is uh, this is a home run. Yeah. Like exactly. one match like outcome or something, it's tough because, mm -hmm. you know, it's yeah. that's a hit. But uh Probably. pretty good stuff. And he did not snipe it. He did Write not this snipe down. it. All right, Judd. The Edmonton Oilers will reach the Stanley Cup finals. So Dallas, mm. Seattle, Edmonton, Vegas are left. Yeah. The Oilers will reach the Stanley Cup Finals representing the Western Conference. Good or bad for hockey? Good. Well, the, the market is bad, but the... But Connor McDavid good. and Dreisaitl mm -hmm. are good, yes. As yes. far as, uh, yeah, the more eyeballs that McDavid can get in front of, the better. He is a terrific, yeah. he is a tremendous mm -hmm. player. It'd be pretty hilarious from Marcus' perspective if it's Edmonton and Raleigh, North Carolina for the Stanley Cup. But um, I'm, I'm personally right? here for it as a hockey no, fan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. you're right. Six, right? It uh, ro ro uh, <laughs> That's it ro happened. Ro Roley the goalie was with was the Oilers, it? and Carolina yeah. won it. Uh, what was it? Uh, was it Cam Ward? Cam Ward, was yeah. Cam the, Ward. The goaltender. That was the year before or after the lockout. Was that the that was the after. last one before the lockout or? It was after, after. The, the one before was Calgary, Tampa Bay in, in one of the most boring, pathetic pieces of crap Stanley okay. Cups I've ever seen. <laughs> Sorry to rant, but it was terrible. Hockey. Right well, and as a quick note, because of that, I actually got to see the Stanley Cup because on that Carolina team was Heideken and Cullen, St. Right. Cloud yeah. State alums, right. and decided to take the cup to uh, St. Cloud. And that particular day uh, was doing campus tour coming in. And was going to be in the sports band. And the band director guy was saying, yeah, well, I need to get as many people as possible to make like a makeshift sports band for this. Them bringing the cup to Alan Beck Hall. Nice. Are you down? And I was like, yeah. Like, I, so I was yeah, hell yeah. closest as possible to being uh, near the Stanley Cup without physically touching the mm -hmm. thing. 
Did I you guys see Travis Kelsey spike the Super Bowl trophy? It was a fake was that, one, though. It was a fake one? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow, that's that's funny, but like, now is that Brady the real Super Bowl threw trophy? threw the, the real one from boat to boat. Yeah. And they got pissed. <laughs> Can you imagine if that thing lands? What, what body of water were they on? Was that the ocean? Or was that some like... I don't know where it was in, in Tampa. Okay. But uh, yeah, that was that thing. And Gronk caught it, but... They were both so drunk. I wouldn't put odds on that. I'm just to do that to more the, than once. To the bottom of the sea. You have to go a diver Deep sea diving for the Super Bowl trophy. All right, Declan. All right. I'm going to make a couple Wells Fargo predictions here. Wells Fargo championships going on this weekend in Hawaii. Uh, now, someone released these stats that Rory has played incredibly well at Quail Hollow Club, which is where this course is. But Rory has been struggling. All year. And I think he took like a mental break after the Masters. That's what I read. He took a mental break. Uh, and if I'm Rory McIlroy, I, I would stop focusing on live and just worry about yourself, Rory. That's just me thinking. I'm just taking drive-bys at him. But I want to uh, make this quantifiable because I don't believe that he has, uh, this mental break has worked for him. Joel Damon will have a better round than Rory McIlroy at the Wells Fargo Championship. He'll log a better finish, excuse me. He'll log a better finish than Rory okay. McIlroy. At the Wells Fargo and, Championship. And Joel Damon, since that documentary came out, I th unless he's picked it up the last couple of tournaments, has been pretty garbage this year. He's been right? terrible. Yep. Now, okay. he has also played well at this course, so that's also helping me. Like, he's he's logged 18 second and 16 finishes the last three trips to this course since they've redone it. So he's played well at this course, and so has Rory. Uh, but I will say Damon has a better finish than Rory McIlroy this weekend. Write it down. Okay. All right. Write this down. So, John, you said you had one more wrestling prediction, right? Yes, I did. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna get this one off. I was going to save this for the end, but I don't want him to snipe me. So <laughs> Cody wrote, this This weekend is the uh, is backlash, right? Yeah. This weekend. Yep. Mm -hmm. Write this down. Cody Rhodes will bleed at backlash. <laughs> Against Lesnar. He'll bleed. So he's, fa he's facing Brock Lesnar. Well, if it was AEW, he'd for sure no. bleed. Oh, yeah. But WWE doesn't really, they still don't really allow their wrestlers to like blade and bleed. So I think it might be. Oh, they haven't the done that for years. Yeah. Oh, no wonder I quit watching it. It's Every been time a long it time. happens, it's been the hard way. I mean, I mean, worst, just quick tangent. Worst would be uh, SummerSlam where Lesnar went against Orton and just decided to bust him open with elbows. And yeah, that was gross. The match just kind of stopped. Yeah, really good. And Orton still has a scar upside his head. Something mm -hmm. like that. I feel like they're going to try and initiate Cody in some way. So there's going to be a, a hard way off the record. But he will he will bleed at backlash is what I'm saying. Okay, It's Lesnar. He can do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Back over to a John for your third and final prediction here. Okay. This is not my official prediction. I'll actually tell you, though, that the other one that I had had absolutely nothing to do with uh, – Backlash. It was a uh, all-in prediction, but I'm, okay. I'm not going to do that. I'm uh, actually going to kind of tie this into uh, who I'd like to thank uh, as well, because this all kind of ties in. Um, mostly, it is. This is. I'm doing this for my son, uh, Nolan. He just turned 12, and he was with me uh, at the greatest comeback Vikings game with the Colts. Him and yeah. I were together. At that oh, game. you stayed for that whole game? Oh, shut up. <laughs> because of him. This is why I'm thanking him. <laughs> he was doing... Wouldn't it, would it have been awful to have left that yeah, game I at halftime? Leave. I mean, holy well, cow. Imagine your friends like convincing I, you to leave. I wanted to, but my son was actually... After the touchdown, my son was doing the math. He was going, Dad, they just need to do this to this to this and a two-point conversion. Yeah. And it's tied. I'm like, yeah, that'd be that. that'd be great, buddy. But <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, guy, that's I great. So filled, because I of that, that I, I stayed. And so, in this uh, the spirit of this, uh, and this is absolutely a uh, Carlos Gomez type bunt where I'm sniffing the bat beforehand. But <laughs> my son is going on a field trip to school to the Minnesota Twins. Yes, this is the lamest of lame bunts. But on May 11th, the Twins go against the go against the Padres. I will say the Twins will beat the Padres on May 11th. Okay, oh, that's fine. <laughs> that's uh, we'll take it. I know yeah. it's weak, but we got to get that average up. No, I think you're fine. That, that, that... Tatis, they're going to beat Tatis. They're going to beat. That's a that's a that's fine. Nice Padres club. Yeah, it is. They're stacked. It's Machado. Good. That's pretty good. Well, Write this down. John, we will still give you the platform here, this life-changing oh. platform, if you'd like to thank anyone 
uh, that helped get you to this. Wow, this hitting for the cycle on Score North. Uh, I guess I'll also uh, shout out shout out my brother in law Caleb. He does listen to you guys. He uh, did tell me that he's absolutely going to troll the comments of this video. So <laughs> I'm thanking him in advance. Uh, so if you see "boo, you suck," it's directed at me, uh, not you guys. Uh, <laughs> what a what anyways, a deviation from the norm. Usually they're very much directed at us. <laughs> no, it's it's absolutely aimed at me. Uh, so, so anyways, and thank you guys for having me on once again. Awesome, man. John, great stuff. Good luck with your predictions. Thank you, guys. Enjoy Backlash weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see you at Wembley Stadium for AEW's All In later on this year. Yeah. We're going to get Judd out to, to England. Yeah. And thank your kid, too, because your kid provided the support for you to stay. I wish I had a friends or someone who was that supportive of me and had said, you know what, you should probably stay. They, they we were doing the math back. too. There's like, yeah, oh, they, dude, they need a, they need like four yeah. touchdowns. He's like, we're starting right well, now, with or without you. I'm like, well, well no, uh, exactly. That actually gave. That was what we ended up listening to on the car ride home. Was going, I know they. I saw that they did a live. Let's listen to that home. Listen to them pissed off and happy. Like that yeah. was our car ride home. Dude, that listening. video. So Ventline, Ventline is is the most popular show on the Score North menu of shows. But I want to say that YouTube video is at like 170,000 views. Like people continue to watch it in the months and weeks after that game. Just seeing us bitch about the Just first the half for two hours. Just left the game <laughs> as he realized it was the greatest comeback in the history of the league. Yeah. Well, it became a reaction video. Those are always big on YouTube. Yep. Amazing, man. So Jonathan, great stuff, dude. Thanks for coming on. and. Sure, yep, we'll do it again guys. sometime. See ya. All right. He's part of the he's part of the Score North Bronze Jacket Club, or whatever <laughs> we're gonna call it. We gotta come up with some name for the club. People who had have been on Ventline and both write that down. No, I'm the, mad St again. the Steve Martin Club on uh, I'm, SNL. No, I'm pissed off again because I left. You and know what'll uh, help get will help get you unpissed is the Meadows at Mystic. How can you be pissed off at the Meadows at Mystic? That's right. You can't be. You can't be. So you can just uh, drill putts on a beautiful day like today. You know, you can go look at uh, those tee time informations at golfthemeadows.com. Go to golfthemeadows.com to secure those tee times. We're finally in the 60s and 70s. It is finally uh, some mm. golf weather. And then when you're out there, your tee time includes these GPS-infused carts. Very state-of-the-art carts. If you're like Phil and I and you don't know if it's a, uh, well, is it a 160 or is it a 60? Or I don't know which one it is. So give me which club. How close am I to the pin? Well, these carts will uh, will help you out there, even with some heat maps on the putting greens. Okay, so these are in, uh, nice, intuitive, fancy carts. They're included with your tee times at the Meadows at Mystic Lake. Go to golfthemeadows.com to book that tee time. A shout-out to our friends also at Dennis Kirk. So it's definitely riding season today. So whatever you ride, make sure that your ride is ready. With Dennis Kirk, you'll find what you need at DennisKirk.com so you can ride more and wait less. Over 180,000 parts and accessories in stock. Clothing and helmets as well. Shipping is free for orders over $89. If you order by 8 p.m., they ship the same day. Everything you need for your ride at DennisKirk.com. All right, back to Judd, your third and final prediction. All right. It's a wild prediction. It's not going to surprise what? you guys. Uh -huh. Dean Evason will not be the Wilds coach the next time they appear in the playoffs. I see what you're doing there. Uh-huh. I'm being very careful. I'm being very careful mm. because I, he's not in jeopardy now. He's got two years left. Um, our guy, Bill Guerin, in a terrible mood yesterday. It was just unbelievably fantastic, but he was in a terrible mood. Yeah, I think he knows what they're faced with. Um, I think this team very well might miss the playoffs next season, but Dean's not going to be given the keys to the high-powered playoff car next time. I'm sorry, Dean. It hasn't worked out from that perspective. So he okay. will not be the coach next time. I'm curious to hear uh, Billy Guerin, once he's cooled down a little bit, in his next appearance on Judd's Hockey Show. Give him like a, a few weeks to think <laughs> about it, to pontificate, yep. get him on at some point, maybe after the playoffs are over. Yep. Talk about, the show. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Um, he did not take that first question by Russo well at all, and it was a very fair question. Are you a failure? <laughs> yeah, it was not, are you a failure? <laughs> Which got one of the great... That's the weird thing, though. So, Are you ashamed to be a part of this organization? So that question was entirely, in that case, frontal. And Giannis gave one of the most, you know, like like it or not, great, well-thought-out 
answers you know saying i don't want to make this personal but how about you and i thought that was fantastic theater yeah. all right dex all right write this down another uh, wells fargo championship <laughs> prediction here ricky fowler Give, giving the people what they want that's right yeah. no, it's golf cha- like- all right i want some golf stuff i've yeah. made a golf one since the masters all yeah. right the wild are done the wolves are done I know I can make other playoff predictions, but I'm, I'm going to get some. I want stuff on the board. I want Dude, stuff the, on the board for next week. I didn't realize the XFL, I think, like the Super Bowl, they take a week off. I'm pretty sure. That, so it's like not Why? this weekend. It's next it. weekend. The XFL takes the week off like mm-hmm. the NFL does Why? before their championship game. Media, the XFL. Media week, ball. right? Play the damn game. Anyway, sorry. Uh, Ricky Fowler, top five finish at the Wells Fargo Championship this weekend. Ricky's game is back, trending in the right direction for the first time in years. Ricky logs a top five finish at the Wells Fargo Championship. Dude, he is back, man. He's back. Oh, he's he had a few really? years of like getting married and having a kid and stuff, and now the distraction Jacksons are he put off to the side here. Let's. He couldn't putt, correct? <laughs> he he was struggling with putting for a while he, there. Well, and he's also not like the longest hitter. You know, yeah. he's he was an elite putter. Like That's six, like one of the best putters on tour, and then yep. that fell off, and your putting can help you and mask everything. And sure, that didn't work for him. Yeah. All right, gentlemen. Final prediction here of the week. Write this down. Write this down. Couple of big moves for the Timberwolves. I'm going to go on the record. The Timberwolves will part ways with both Jalen Noel and Jordan McLaughlin this offseason. They will not bring back either Jalen Noel or Jordan McLaughlin. I got ridiculed by season. you, by you, for saying that Jordan <laughs> Addison would be third on the Vikings yeah. in reception. You know what? This which is I'll like, admit was sort of a bunt, and then you come back with this. This is like when people say, "Well, I mean, like a lot of players complain to the officials." Yeah, well, like, but Cat is really the player who cried wolf. He's always complaining to the officials. Okay, that's yep. you. You're always checking down. Old Macadac almost never checks down. And I'm giving you at least two players in one here, okay? Like, they could bring back I Jordan McLaughlin. Jordan McLaughlin's their backup point guard right now. I gave you six predictions. One was a check down. Okay, that's fine. I came through today. Oh, boy. We're getting combative. I came through someone, today. Someone, our someone is picking taking out his stuff. frustration of missing 15 predictions on Damn Purple right, right there. Am I told you before? I'm still Coming out sideways. It. And that coffee. You know what I need? <laughs> I need that damn pontoon now. <laughs> oh, man. Go to PowerLodge.com. <laughs> hey, That's Power right. Lodge, get me that pontoon. I need to chill. All right, those are your write-that-down predictions, your accountability session down. here. The only show in America that actually puts statistics next to our predictions, Minnesota Sports with Mackie and Judd. See you tomorrow.